Hey man, say man, what's happening, man? I'm your boy Gators J231 Southside Guy. I'm your host, and this is episode 65, man. Yes, sir. Man. How y'all all doing tonight, man? I'm feeling good, bro. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, good evening. Good evening. In the house. Fast, fast. I see we got some special people in the building. Hey, man, hey, hold on, hold on, man. Hey, we got some real special people in the building today, man. We got some Southside legends, Clay Coast's very own. Both of them hailing from Mount Zion, the mighty Mount Zion Bulldog. We got former county rushing record holder. Are you former or are you current? I, I, I don't know. Man. These, I, I, we gonna, I, but I, listen, I, he held them records for Hey, man, I'm talking about we got we got the Daisy that grew from the concrete in Clayco on the show. Ooh, love that. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Daisy. You got to put the DR period in front of that guy. We, hey, put some respect on her name. Listen, man. <laughs> We got some real big heavy hitters in the building, man. Um, and it's a special moment, man. I went to high school with both. Actually, I didn't get to go to high school with JR. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into that a little bit later, though. Um, I got a chance to go to high school with Dave. We all went to the same school. I got to be inspired by JR before getting into high school. And I'm gonna give him his flowers and I'm gonna tell him about that. And uh, also, how he got me on my water journey this year, too. He okay. didn't even know he did that. Okay. Um, but we tapped in, man. So. Let's start off with the ladies first. Daisy, man, tell us, tell us about yourself. Tell us your name, where you're from, where you matriculated from high school, college, and there and, and there after. So once again, I am Daisy Austin. I am a doctorate in pharmacy. Um, a recent graduate that was 2021. Um, so from high school, I did grow up. Um, I originally came from Chicago. I grew up. So in the okay. south side of Chicago, okay. but um, I came here in like the sixth grade, came down to Georgia, and so Clayton County is where Crazy. my foots landed, oh. and Mount Zion, I was there, I played basketball there, yeah. um, I ran track there, and so after that, you know, just transitioning through high school, that was a little bit rocky, getting into the later years. Um, I ended up growing up with no parents. I'm not sure, you may know my older brother and sister, um, but I was the first one, even though they were older than me, I was the first one to graduate high school. Breaking generational yes. curses, and man, so amen. That was the first step. That was something that I knew. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm in charge of my own path. Hey. Nothing was laid out for me. This is the time where I'm starting to write. And so that's where I started. I was originally supposed to go to interior design school. I got accepted into SCAD design and, um, art and design school here in Atlanta, but I just couldn't afford to go. Yeah. I didn't have any parents and stuff like that. I didn't know the process of loans and all that those things. So I was like, all right, let's hit the ground working. Let's see what where that takes me. And so I was in retail management for about five years working on. Hold way. on, hold on, Daisy. Because you got a lot going <laughs> I got a lot. on. Let I got me slow it down. Hey, let me let me let me run it back right quick. Let me so the people can catch up. Cause hey, we put this shit down quick and quick. Oh, excuse my language, my daughter's here. The children, I'm hoping that you got your children tuned in because the purpose of this is catering to the culture. Yes. And we want to give the roses and the daisies to these people in Clayco who are putting on, man, and putting us in a positive light. So we're going to start back, man. We got Daisy, man. She, she matriculated here from, from uh, excuse me, she came here from Chicago, mm -hmm. Southside, and then she joined us on the Atlanta Southside or the Southside of Atlanta Clayco to be exact. Yes. Um, she had some, some early on um, adversity that she had to overcome. Not having parents in the household, being the first one to break some generational curses and to graduate, man. So we're not going to skim over that because that's very important. Um, and I want to just slow down and let that, let everybody take that in, man, about what really happened right here. The daisy that grew from the concrete in Clayco. All right? So that's powerful. If you got some daughters who checking in right now, you got sons who checking in, this is a former cheerleader, um, mod, turned model, turned doctor. Yes, I even got into the, yes, and that's she a even got to the man, man. Man. Hey, man. I just want to make sure the sure people know who we got. <laughs> she ain't let her hey, finish, girl. Daddy, you I know I'm excited, bro. I don't even get to know bro. who she is. She's like, you want to talk. I went live man. this morning. I'm excited, Come bro. Come on, man. Daddy, you finish right, up, man. No, no, but I just want to put some respect on the name. I'll make it brief. No, but transitioning from that, working my way up in retail, I realized, like, okay, I went from sales associate to store manager within five years. Ooh. I was like, okay, I've reached the max of this, what yeah. now? And so I actually quit my career out of the middle of nowhere, quit that salary job and was like, okay, I am now about to brand myself. And that's mm. when the modeling started. Um, I'm published in hair magazines, I've done videos, I've done print work, I've done runway. 
Um, right. I've worked with some amazing people in the stylist realm and, you know, just meeting and networking with a bunch of entrepreneurs and young go-getters in Atlanta. Um, uh, so let me ask you something about that, man. Um, when you were when you when you finally made that conscious decision to say, you know what, I'm just going to take myself off the of plantation and I'm going to bet on me. Yes. Can you tell us about the emotions that you may have went through so for um, when me, that happened? Yeah, so one of the things that kind of pushed me into that and let me know that I was making the right decision was I was in a car accident um, the year that I left my job and I needed more time off. Yeah. And the upper, the higher ups was like, no, mm -hmm. if you need more time, we have to go with, find someone else. And I was like, okay, well, before you even do that, just know that you can find them because I'm no longer going to be working Ooh. for you because... I needed someone who, you know, just, respect I mean, my your, skill, yeah. Oh, respect, respect your me, skill respect, set and yeah. have some work-life balance. And, we, but we know that jobs can move forward without you. And so I moved forward with my life because I knew that they could move forward in their, with their job and whoever else they found. Yeah, so was that scary for you? It was so scary. Um, like I said, I didn't have a backup plan. I didn't have money saved. This was out the blue, but I knew that if I bet you know, on myself, then, that was gonna work for me. And it literally, it did. I made more money working for myself or just pushing myself um, than I did in that salary job. So I tell people all the time, whatever dreams you have, like, go out there. Yeah. You know, nobody can tell you not to go. So, not, you can't do it. I got a question for you. So when you quit your job, was it like a cold turkey type thing? Like today I woke up like, yo, no way. <laughs> right. You know, yes. you know, like, I ain't even yes. coming in. Y'all right, coming in, y'all can keep it. Yes. Yes, okay. it literally no, was weeks. one of those things. It was it was not even a two week notice, yeah. none of that. Because like I said, that conversation, it it just it really it was a disappointment for me. And right. I knew that I was working for a company that did not value me and so I had to move on. Um, so it put that fire out but lit another fire it out. Did. Sure. It did. And I'm literally, y'all, I, I made so much money those two years working for myself, yeah. just branding myself, um, to where I was like, Why didn't I do this sooner? Which allowed me to you know, in a year's time to say, you know what? Okay, now I can actually go to school. I can afford it now. Yeah. Now I can pay my way through. When I first started undergrad, I was paying straight out of pocket because I had, I bet on myself. Yeah. You know, now I had the time and the money to do it. Hey man, check this out. Hey, so for any parents out there um, with children who have uh, special skills, things that they believe in um, that you don't necessarily understand, whether that be video games, uh, making edits and wanting to do some modeling, whatever they want to do, man, encourage them to do that in their spare time. Because as you can see right now, she was able to free herself from having to report to another person and another person being in control of her destiny um, by pursuing herself and betting on her own self and, and establishing a brand. Um, and we got a guy here by the name of J.R. McNair who can tell you a lot about, you know, starting up. Um, we just gonna flip from, from, from guest to guest because they're both exciting. I don't want to cut you off, Daisy, no. but I kind of want to build, and we're going to bring both of y'all childhood together to how y'all got to the point that y'all are at now. So we're now going to merge into, um, how much time we got before we go to commercial? Uh, production out here. Man, you got it, man. You good. We can so, ride? You know, yeah, we are. Right. Dang, Gator the real, hey, Gator really run, run shit over here at Skybox. I don't know if y'all know, but if y'all see him on Instagram, man. Southside, was it Southside guy 231? 231. 231. Yeah. You know what exit we on, man. Hey, so yeah. he called the socks, man. If we want to keep going, we can keep going. Um, so right now we got JR, man. And before I let JR come in, just tell us a little bit about his childhood. Um, up until you know, going to high school and then the next step after high school. I'm gonna go ahead and give um first I'm gonna give Daisy her flowers because I was in high school with her, man. She was a cheerleader. Uh, she was very reserved, you know what I'm saying? Kept to herself, quiet, can't, no smut on her name. You know, no smut <laughs> no, on her name, no. you know what I'm saying? Um, cheerleader, man. And that's as much as I can say. You know what I'm saying? I respected her from afar. Hey, you know all, what I'm, I'm going to say is shit. I was at school with y'all motherfuckers, and I didn't know her. So yeah, like, yeah, because she stayed <laughs> under the radar. <laughs> hey, yeah, and that's what I'm trying to tell you about respectability. You know hey. what I'm saying? So I respected her from afar because of how she carried herself. Um, and then we haven't spoken since high school, but it was just like, once this happened, it's like everything kind of gravitationally pulled in the right direction. So I yep. was able to get back with her. So she was doing some nice things. And we're giving her her daisies right now. The same daisy that grew out of clay coal, that concrete. We're going to give them to her today. So I want to uh, do that now. And we're going to do it again. But now we're going to JR's childhood. Now, I'm going to tell y'all about JR. I mean, hey, bro. wait. No, we sick of you. I keep telling you. JR, you tell us about you. Quit listening. <laughs> man, I want to give this nigga his flowers, man. man. I brought flowers, Yo, nigga. Well, shit, he done gave him to us. I, I want to know about you, JR. Yeah, you yeah, tell yeah. me who you tell, is. Tell him, and then I'm going to tell him. Hey, 
Yeah. Well, well, I just want to say thank y'all for giving me the opportunity to come on. I, um, you know, I go, I speak all across the world, and um, you know, it's nothing more special than coming home. You know, it's hey, nothing like coming man. home. And uh, you know, I remember uh, being here when you know, way, way before the Olympics. You know, um, way before anything. I mean, you know, Atlanta was really like a sleepy city. Yeah. When, hey. You know, and so before there was traffic. You know, I mean, we had some traffic, but it really wasn't. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> the biggest traffic was doing freak time. You, 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 what, right. man? I, man, I'm trying. I, you know, that's another thing, man. Why did they let that go, man? It was like. It's crazy. I get all the others. I get to an extent. It's kind of like they let Freak Nick go. They they closed down everything in Buckhead. I Buck remember head, what happened. You know? I, I know I ain't too old, but I no. was a little young and wild back then. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. remember what happened. It was a girl who got snatched out of the Jeep. Yeah. It came up missing. Okay, okay. And that was like the... It yeah, happened, yeah, but it never yeah. particularly happened like that in yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that year, yeah. that was like '96. That was, yeah, that was the last year. The next two years, years they, they, yeah, they did '98, '97, and '98. Well, I had a T-shirt. Oh like, man! Yeah, yeah. My yeah. daddy took me down that water yeah, back yeah, in the yeah, days. Yeah, so, yeah. Hey, my yeah. mom went to Morris yeah. Brown. I ain't gonna tell her business, but I had myself free in it too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got a, I had a T-shirt. I remember I got in trouble for wearing it at school. You remember yeah, the yeah, no, no, Oh, I yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, I was the red bro. car on it. Yeah, hey. with, the, with, the, with the animated oh, features. I was oh, just saying that. No, no, listen, no. It was, but the whole thing was, I get that there was a lot of things that weren't so good about it. But my thing was, like, why would you just throw the whole thing out? Throw the baby in the bathwater, just everything out. Like, say, hey, you know what? Let's talk about this. How can we make this Revamp better? It. Yeah. Because, because guess what? Guess what happened after it that? It took a lot it, of money from the city. It took not only that, but now it switched and made Daytona hot. It uh, made uh, yeah. it made all of yeah. the other areas resources. um uh, hot. And, 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 and Luke did it down there. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And, and then you look at things like the Buckhead. They was like, oh, we want to change Buckhead because of the crime. Well, guess what? Buckhead still got crime. Yeah. Okay. Hey. But you took all of the clubs out. Man, when we used to come home at college, come and walk around, it was just. You know, it was just it was just cool just to be amongst other yeah. young people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You meeting people from all across the nation and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was phenomenal, man. And then now, you know, you look back and we're trying to create stuff like that with with places like A3C. You know, uh, a, uh, you know, we're trying to do all these events, yeah. trying to bring back some form of that kind of culture community. But yeah, we yeah. had it and we kind of was like, nah, we don't want this, yeah. you know? And I mean, it's the same thing, man. I think this kind of speaks to just things happening organically. So, yeah, yeah. Now, you know. I think particularly, I think that at first when this first happened, Atlanta wasn't ready for change. Yeah. And they wasn't ready to see what the new Atlanta is today. Yeah. They right. wasn't ready for that technology. They wasn't yeah. ready for these years that yeah. we get. If they would have knew like what they knew now, yeah. like shit, you could actually damn cuss on the radio. You yeah. could damn yeah. see yeah. A, maybe see a titty on TV. Titty on TV. Like back <laughs> in our day, you Super couldn't Bowl. see that. Nah, that's nah, true. Yeah. Okay. So Janet it's Jackson like yo, so, away from that. Yeah. so when they start doing that, it showed us like growth. Just like I hate to say it, Corona gave us growth yeah. because even though we hate to admit it, now you can damn do anything you need to in a fucking at home yeah you can get your groceries at home you can damn get anything in that get the new yeah. movies at home yeah and yo i ain't gonna lie i thought i thought i knew you were a real doctor but i thought you was like <laughs> a doctor doctor now with the looking up she hey you can even get your damn pills that you need yeah. at home yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. everything yes. you need yeah. yes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Nah, it's, it's, I mean, it's just a testament to change. You know, the one thing we know is that the con most consistent thing in the world is change. Hey, hey. You always know that change is going to come. Yeah. And and um, and this is something, I mean, and, you know, I've seen this community change so much ever since I was a kid. Yeah. You hey. know, I mean, growing up, man, a lot of people, you know, I remember, you know, uh, uh, um, growing up in College Park, Riverdale, um, and going to Riverdale Middle School at first over there, and and I remember Tip was a couple years older than me. Yeah. So you know, uh, um, and look, a lot of people don't know what you're about to say. Tell them about where Tip really be, where really Tip from. Yeah, I mean, well, he he he, he grew up in Riverdale. Yeah. After, yeah. He, yeah. But a uh, but, uh, but, hey, sound bite there but, for me. I'm gonna add but, Tip. But 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 Man. this but this is a whole lot of things that people don't realize though. A lot of the stuff that happened in the city when they shut down a lot of the projects, yes. like in Mechanicsville and all of these things, they gave them vouchers to move down in areas like Clayton County. Bingo. And so you know you got to real. Uh, uh, I mean, Clayton County was kind of at that point in time. 
you know, when I grew up in Riverdale, white. guess what? I was I was the only black kid in the it class. It was white. I was the only That's black. That's how it was when I came here. You, you I know, like. Yeah. Well, I don't know what years you got here, but um, I came. We moved from Atlanta to Clayton County when I was in first grade. So I was yeah. six years old. Yeah. I, oh, went to, I went to three schools and six when I was in um, first grade. Yeah. Um, And then two was in Clayton County, and then I ended up in Mount Zion. But, yeah. man, it was like two white, two, two black kids. Two black kids. It was not me. Not in Mount Zion Elementary. Nigga, man, hold on. Nigga. I can ever, no, no, it was it not. Was bro, I got my first birth. I still got my, yeah. uh, nah, I don't got yeah. my yearbook. My, my girl, my I old girlfriend got, got her yearbook. Yeah. 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 She got her yearbook, bro, and I'm going to show you. I can show you my clan, bro. It's like me. And like a five, all my OSG homeboys, we the only black well, kids who was there. Well, well, you, I don't know, man. That was first grade. Education. You yeah. came in like fifth grade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now I came fourth grade. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna tell you yeah. what. I'm gonna tell you what. <laughs> it kind of started switching. So when when I was in. We were going to I went to Church Street Elementary and then we I played um, basketball there. Yeah, yeah. And then I then we went to I went to Riverdale Middle. And so the thing you saw is that like, you know, and it was great because you had people like, I mean, it was the suburbs, and then you had one part of Riverdale that was kind of like hood. Yeah. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And so yeah. you you know, so so you know, when you were going to school, like, you know, I'm growing up. Um, with, with a cat that, you know, really ain't, um, you know, growing up with all these different cats, man. Some of these cats was out there really doing it, you oh, know, and yeah. I mean, we got that kind of uh, same environment. So, I mean, it was it was it was good to kind of see that kind of approach and how it kind of really developed over the years in Clay County. So, nah, right. you know, I, I don't know if you uh, wanted to go ahead and continue on what you was about to say beforehand. But hey, look, <laughs> nah, can you tell it? Hey, man, I ain't gonna lie. Like, everything you said is real. Like, real is tri- not a <laughs> nah, we're in Atlanta, Joan Bell in Atlanta, Marlon, Atlanta, Park Park. We, we, we clay coat. That's yeah. who we yeah. are. Yeah. We are yeah. Atlanta's displaced natives, and I wear that, that badge well, and I love that honor and respect. My family's from Thomasville Heights area of Atlanta. If y'all know what Thomasville Heights is, I still got family who stay in Thomasville Heights. I bought property over there. Um, not not too far from Thomasville Heights. I ain't gonna let y'all know where I stay at. But I'm in the city. My 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 um, address is Atlanta now. My trash can say Atlanta now. My heart is clay coat. I got a little bit of both of, the, of that going on, man. And what he said is real. You know, a lot of us were displaced to Clayton County. Um, and then we got this big melting pot that Clayton County is, where you got so many various cultures, man. You got you got the Carlton blacks, and you got the, you got the uh, you got the Kodak blacks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got you got Latinos, <laughs> you got Vietnamese, man. You got Chinese, Japanese, you got Indian. It's just so much various culture, man. Um, that that you can be exposed to, man, and you can go up and, and learn a lot of things from different cultures and I think that's a beautiful thing that we have here in Clay Co. Yeah, that's how I start eating four around this motherfucker. That boy yeah. love it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, but, uh, good. Matter of fact, fact, matter of fact, let's go get to the next song. Dude. Let's get a song again and take a look. Yeah, 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 okay. I, I, Let's stretch our legs around this motherfucker. Yeah. Scooby, go on tell us what that song is right there, my boy. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Who that? Go ahead, man. You got it. Already got it on y'all. Go ahead. All right, I'll tell y'all what it is. You gotta get song. quit being so quiet over there. Hey, I man. See, I see why they didn't want to say the song because their name is crazy. I ain't even looked at it. All right. Mm. And he got I'm it on small print. Hey, hey, I'm gonna tell I, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Man, listen, I was in the gifted program before I signed his name out, I promise. Yeah, okay. we seen you with the damn little special helmet on. We got the gift. Dirty and dirty. I wear it well. All right, but uh, this is, uh, it looks like Clairroy. I'm gonna just say K L R Y X O featuring Big Bone. The name of this song is Kids Bop. we here for the Keiko culture. Okay. Let's see what this is. Kids yeah. Bop. The Starving Artist Podcast. Uh, yeah. Now I go with the best. Oh my God. Dropping the hot shit all fucking night. Oh, still a going in. You're going in too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a rolling stone, pocket full of stone, hundreds in my shoe box. Fuck a lot of hoes, rock design and clothes, fill my rolling up with rocks. Make a touch of nose, make a touch of toes, start it off some kid pops. We shooting shots at the ops, we do not fuck with the cops. I'm a rolling stone, pocket full of stone, hundreds in my shoe box. Fuck a lot of hoes, rock design and clothes, fill my rolling up with rocks. Make a touch of nose, make a touch of toes, start it off some kid pops. We shooting shots at the ops. We do not fuck with the cops. 
I'm a rolling stone, it ain't hard to tell. Gas my cologne, know you niggas smell. So much fish, love flakes on the scale. Make a touch of nail, not a fingernails, phone steady ringing. I got lots of bell, pocket full of stone. I got clientele, she give me top off the top. I put codeine on the rocks. Rocking rollies with rubber bands, trying to stuff a shoebox with a honey gram. Pull up on your slap back like a minivan. Tap on twice, get the hard call on Instagram. I'm a gold, I'm a star, I'm a pentagram. Soft and serving fine, way like the Pentagon. She turned to a mermaid when you turn her on. Got her rooting for me like it's bring it on, make her bring it on. I'm a rolling stone, pocket full of stone. Hunters in my shoebox. Fuck a lot of hoes, rock design of clothes. Fill my rolling out with rocks. Make a touch of nose, make a touch of toes. Started off some kid pops. We shooting shots at the ops. We do not fuck with the cops. I'm a rolling stone, pocket full of stone. Hunters in my shoebox. Fuck a lot of hoes, rock design of clothes. Fill my rolling out with rocks. Make a touch of nose, make a touch of toes. Started off some kid pops. We shooting shots at the ops. We do not fuck with the cops. Flyest nigga with it, biggest nigga in it. I really put that shit on. I love Gucci Prada and Versace too. Bleed don't tell me, bitch, I'm in my zone. I've been going crazy, I've been spinning lately. I've been shopping, baby, I'm really popping. That shit ain't real, boy, you need to stop it. My whip is a spaceship and she give me comment. That's a hot topic. I dream of Jeannie, I lay the seat back and she ride on my weenie. These bitches and all, cause my diamonds are gleaming. She red like the devil, it's hopping a demon. Put on the gas, she smoking gas. Bitch, I'm a chief, yeah, I'm really chiefing. I'm high as fuck, I'ma be here all weekend. My Yeezys exclusive, I drip on the beaters. I'm a rolling stone, pocket full of stone. Hunters in my shoebox. Fuck a lot of hoes, rock design of clothes. Fill my rolling out with rocks. Make a touch of nose, make a touch of toes. Started off from kid pops. We shooting shots at the ops. We do not fuck with the cops. I'm a rolling stone, pocket full of stone. Hunters in my shoebox. Fuck a lot of hoes, rock design of clothes. Fill my rolling out with rocks. Make a touch of nose, make a touch of toes. Started off from kid pops. We shooting shots at the ops. We do not fuck with the cops. Hey man, there ain't no kids hey, bop, man, buddy. Hey man, there ain't no kid bop for no kid. That nigga said kid bop shooting at the ops, man. Man, I don't know hey, what that man. man no, I don't want my kid bopping and nothing shooting at the ops. You know? My kid hey. need to be in the house. It's a no for me, dog. Man, man, nah, man, you know somebody might be. Deep. I mean, it. it it, I, I guess like it depends beat. on what like the, the beat is. The, the beat is good, <laughs> but 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 the the what he the lyrics the is not matching up. Nah, nah. Hey man, one nah. time, one time for my boy DZB just walked in the door, man. Another one of Mount Zion's finest. He won the um hidden instructions at the uh, upper deck banner cage. If you've ever played baseball in Clayton County or in Atlanta at all, and you have not been to Upper Deck Bad and Cage, Upper you Deck. really ain't playing, but it's nah. been around. Where is that line in? Bro, it's in the it's in Riverdale, Riverdale. Right and across the street, Yo, that Kroger. And it's Black Hey, man, though. hey, oh, yeah. hey, man. It's where the old Walmart used to be at, Ooh, man. Oh, hey, pull some strikes out here, OG. <laughs> the old Walmart. We pull the strikes, Before man. they moved across the street. Hey, <laughs> okay. we right here. Hey, but hey, hey, check this out now. Now, we talked to the Daisy that grew from the, from the, uh, the concrete and Clayco. We're gonna go back to her. But right now, man, we're gonna tap in with my with, with my big brother, JR McNair, man. And I'm about to fan out a little bit, bro. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, but I'm comfortable with who I am. It's so all right. I'm, I'm about to fan out a little groovy. bit. Now, I ain't no groupie, though. <laughs> but I'm gonna follow this guy's intellect, and I wanna follow in the path because I see where he's headed. Now, here we go, though. So, eighth grade. My eighth grade year, um, I was playing football, MD Roberts Middle School. And okay. Mount Zion was on a tear. Indeed. Mount Zion was headed to the Georgia Dome. They had these running backs, Rowan Jeffers and um, J.R. McNair. And bro, Mount and, the, and Madden on Nintendo 64 was out. Bro, I literally created an entire team on Madden with the Mount Zion board out. But yeah. Gator like, I don't want to hear this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but look, but no, for real. You was my starter running back. I had Tyrone Pender. I had Travis Nichols. I had Big Johnny, I had the, the, the Hatfields, yeah, I had Big yeah. Eldon, I had everybody yeah. on my on my squad on Nintendo 64 in eighth grade, but on y'all, y'all tear to the Georgia Dome, man. Yeah. And um that year y'all nigga gave it like, boy, this is fuck of shit if I ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be comfortable with your shit. Boy, tattoo. hey look, every strike, every cue that I was brand, every tat I got on me is secure what I'm saying right now, I promise you. I see. All yeah. ten toes of my yeah. all ten of my toes is down. So look, apparently, 
A parent, motherfucker. But he still can't catch you, can he? No, I can't. <laughs> what's the what, what's a forty? What was a forty back then? Man, too fast for you. My forty was about four four, but most oh, people oh. don't realize. You know, I was I didn't speed. I was there was maybe some nah, people you was that physical. Was Man, I, I went. I got it. I got it done in the weight well, room, man. I was trying to be the strongest person out there. So Yo. since that's okay, man, man, what records you beat? What, what records what, what you, records you, you hold in the, the yeah, that, that you counter. hold? The one yeah. that you beat, all that good time. Well, well, I know single season um, Russian um, records. I mean, you know, my my senior year, man. You know, we had an opportunity. We went straight undefeated up into the state uh, championship, and uh, we lost to uh, uh, Oconee, Oconee County. County. And uh, you know, they uh, we were running it. I mean, we was running up the score like you know, 64, 68 uh, uh, points a game. And okay, I mean, okay. put you know, put in you know, I mean, I mean. Both of, I mean, our whole team was just stacked from yeah. from the front line. We had a, a phenomenal front line to our to our backs. To I mean, we had great coaches, Coach Coach Green, uh, Coach Bean. You know, we had some uh, Coach Coach Hackney, who's who's now the uh, head coach at uh, Riverdale High yeah, School. Yeah. We had all of these. Um, I mean, we had the. Um, I mean, and it was diverse, man. Yeah. You know, we had um, people to wear in all areas that that made the, that made the team really. You know, that my senior year, I won my second state championship in wrestling. We went to the state championship in track and won a state championship in track right, right. so right. and then and then we went and then i and then i went all state chorus you know so Jeez. i was i was singing uh, bro was tyrese but you tyrese. Still, you <laughs> still got all your ring huh? still got all your man, ring you know I, I think they somewhere man you know i always you know one of the things unless it's brought up you know i always look at hey what what can i do now yeah. you know like because at the end of the day it was it was a phenomenal run i mean back in the day man this whole area because you know mount zion ain't really it's not a city right it's, it's just it's a culmination it's of a, a lot strip. of cities hey. correct yeah. and so yeah. you got all of this community that came together i mean and it was i mean it was something this whole community came together man the whole parking lot every yeah. i mean every time when we came back man i'm telling you i played i played college ball i played professional football and nothing was more special than my senior year of high school. Hey, bro. Right here. I'm, and, and it's nothing more special than that year. It was, no, it was, no, this it was like something out of a dream. This shit wow. shaped my childhood. Like, I want to be <laughs> clear about this shit. What made me want to play football again, because I played I played football because I was good, not because I liked the sport, right? Yeah. And then, so this year, when they went on this tear, bro, like, I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to Mount Zion next year, nigga. I'm about to play football for real. Yeah. But I was getting out of my games and getting out of practice and run into the car so I could get in the car with my mom to go see them play. And so, man, they dyed their hair blonde as they was going. I dyed my shit blonde. Yeah. I'm looking crazy <laughs> as hell in middle school. Well, I'm talking about my fro. I had a baby ass fro. My shit was blonde as hell. My teacher's looking at me crazy. I'm like, I'm going to the game. I got a one red sock, one black sock. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking stupid as hell, but that's how, much, that's how powerful that run that year when Mount Zion did that, they went to the man. I'm but you know, was, but you know something, you you was feeding us and you ain't even know it. Yeah. I mean, when we had those people, we can look out there and we saw that they was behind us. Man, that fed us, man. It fed us. Yeah. It gave us that energy. Yeah. And I don't think I'm uh, people that 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 uh, uh, twelfth man. That extra person yeah, out there, y'all yeah, yeah. don't realize how much that does. If I can look out in those fans and I know I got my squad behind me, yeah. it just make me just, you know, I'm gonna yeah. I'm make my, make it my best to, to make sure they got their money's worth by coming to watch me. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, so partner over there better be scared because I'm not running out of bounds. I'm yeah. about to run straight through you right, through. to the end zone. Yeah, he <laughs> was not a finesse runner at all. I don't know, y'all can't really see, but I'm talking about. Man, I'm talking about bitch. You held some weightlifting records at Mount Zion. I did. Too. I did for you know for, squ for squatting and um, hang clean. Yeah. And, you know that was the thing. I realized. I said, you know, most people didn't know, but I couldn't catch a cold. I couldn't catch a ball of my yeah, life. I never seen you catch a ball. Right now. Nah, <laughs> <right. laughs> I didn't know but, that. But you know, but but how, how did a guy that couldn't catch a ball play right. professional football? Right. Well, because I, I focused on what I, you did. I focused on my strengths. Yeah. I told. Yeah. I, that, I said, Coach, you yeah. put that ball in my hand, and I was like Forrest Gump. I was a running. Oh, you know, running back. Yeah. Running back, man. They couldn't, right. you know, once I got that ball, three, four, five touchdowns, I mean, that's that's what that's I did. It. So I built up what I knew I was good at. So I knew that I could be the strongest person on the field. So I said, I'm going to work this. So when everybody was eating bonbons in the summertime, watching TV, <laughs> I was outside. <laughs> yeah. I was I was in the gym hitting it, you know, making sure that when I got to camp that, that I looked like, uh, I, I, you know, I, I looked like I was in um, going for a year. Yeah. You know, it, bro, it, you look like a jailhouse MA 233 <laughs> patty <laughs> Like, for real, bro. For real. And then be going to choir practice. Yeah, like, 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 look, for real. And, and, and graduating <laughs> with 3.6, bro. Yeah, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Went to college. 
Bro, I graduated with a 364. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? From a D1 yes. school. Yes. Um, Dean's List. Yes. And, yes. Hold on, and so, now we're in college. I, I did kind of move ahead, but we went. So now you're in college. You're both of these records. You know what I'm saying? You're in college. You, you graduate. You have all this success. I think y'all went, what, 12 and 2? 12 and 1. 12 yeah, and 1, 12, one season. Yeah, yeah. And um, y'all having all this success. Yeah. And say, look, tell us about your first job offer and what you did with it. Well, man, you know. And how much was it for? Yeah, man, so this was, you got to realize, this was like 20 years ago. Jeez. And so, you know, I was in, um, you know, I had just incorporated my first business. Um, and so uh, I was, and then I had just got elected to be student body president. So I was a academic uh, um, um, All-American and I was um, all-conference. And But then I had got elected to represent the student body as the, as the president. And so, you know, I had all these uh, people that were coming to me like, man, you know, we want to we wanna give you, you know, we, we want to see what you can do. So I had BMW come to me and I was just, um, I had just turned um, uh, 20, 19, 20, something like that. And they were like, hey, we want to offer you this job. We know you got another year, but we want to give you a job and we want to give you some rides. So I was, you know, <laughs> so, hold on, hold on. This man said some, some rides. Some with rides. The S. Hey. I'm talking about two, some two. Rides. Okay. So you got a kid from Atlanta. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They, they like, hey, are we going to pay you a hundred thousand plus and we're going to give you some vehicles. And you know, I was like, man, but I, you know what I realized though? I said, you know what? Well, let me, just, let me, if y'all giving me this now and I'm just a junior, let me see, let my prospects kind of roll out. And so 20 I, years ago, yeah, man, 100,000, 20 years ago is a man. lot different. Yes. Than right. yes. it, it really Major is. Yeah. It really, and I mean, it, you know, like, because they had me in the newspaper, like every, every other week yeah. and I was given, you know, and, and I mean, you know, shout out to Wofford college, you know, but at that point in time, you know, we weren't really known on that level. Yeah. And and so they were kind of, they kind of used me as kind of the like their, their poster boy. This yeah. black kid from Atlanta who at this 95% white school, who's the who's the star running back on a football team and also student government uh, president. Right. So they were like, hey, let's, let's use them. To, right. and, I, and I was cool with it, you know? So, I mean, it, it was like, hey, this is what I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gave win. me a scholarship. I'm, I'm here, hey. Mine too. I'm gonna get mine too. You know right. So, right. so you know, I was out there, um, and um, and and then I had a second job offer from a company called Cousins Properties. They, you know, the Pinnacle Building yeah, downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All they yeah. own all those buildings, and they. I sat down. I see. This is the crazy thing. I never sat down with uh, uh, anybody in HR or nothing like that. I sat down with like the CEOs of these companies because they were like, "Hey, listen, <laughs> we want you to come and, and have." It. I remember you. sitting down with the the CEO and chairman at the top thing uh, in there, you know, talking to him as he was offering me these job offers and stuff. And I don't know what kind of craziness I was thinking, but I remember sitting in a meeting with the CEO <laughs> of a multi-billion dollar company. And he said, such and such. Hey, drop the music for this shit. <laughs> hey, drop the music for this shit. I, I, I told him, I said, he was like, so JR, what you know, what your plans in this? I said, well, I said, be honest with you, man. I said, you know, I'll probably work for y'all a couple years and then I'm gonna start my own business. And, uh, and uh, you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't like I was, I was just being honest. I, yeah. I wanted him to know where I was. Cause you know, they was gonna have to put a lot of money, invest in this money in me, yeah. you know? And I didn't yeah. want them to, you know, put all this money in me knowing that, that I was gonna leave when yeah. I, and, and, and guess what? I only went to college. Cause I had started, I had started my companies when I was younger. I had you had, a, my, you had a landscaping business. I had you? a landscaping business, man. I bought my first piece of real estate oh, when I was fourteen. Yeah. So when I was just, I was busting tables. Me and my boy Jr. Lemon. So you may know Jr. Lemon. He's a he is a, a, a Tyler Perry star, like actor. He's been in a bunch of. Uh, he's a big time actor. Okay. But we used to bust tables at uh, at the IHOP over on, on Riverdale. I know <laughs> in Riverdale, right like what they're right. 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 yeah, yeah, man. So we used to be able to bust the tables, you know. And uh, but I had some money, so I remember, um, you know, I started studying real estate when I was like uh, uh, um, twelve, and so. I watched the infomercials at night. They say, uh, you can make money. Uh, I used to be in a butcher factory, and I'm a multimillionaire in real estate, and you can too, for $99.99, plus shipping and handling. Yeah. You know? yeah. He bought it. And, and look, I bought that thing, man. Yeah. And, and I started learning real estate. But see, I have, see, but that was my second course. I would stay up at night watching these infomercials. So at, at 10, I had bought my first course. This guy saying, yeah, you know, you, you, can, you can get a, um, a, a 800 number and learn how to make money in classifieds 
for $39.99 plus shipping and handling. And I was like, all right. So, yeah. I, was, so I had already, I was in a rhythm of, of buying this stuff. I didn't care because I was like, you think it's well, like a man, I was, yes. man, I was yes. like, look, we, my family, I mean, look, I just wanted to buy some tennis shoes. Yeah. I wanted to go to school where I wasn't going to get roasted for having them cat heads, them Adidas with the, with the four stripe. <laughs> the, 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 the I stopped my daughter from buying some of them flips the other day. <laughs> 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 Still didn't want to look She's at me. Like, don't look <laughs> look, but, but man, they used to get you, man. If you weren't oh. coming, and you know, yes. you, and this is I'm just talking about our community, right? Yo, fair, yes. You know, you could have been the smartest cat, you could have been the coolest cat. That didn't matter. That, that did not matter. matter. If you weren't coming That's to school, fine. right? They was gonna let you know. Gator but, don't roast me two shows ago by my shoe. Remember that Gator? <laughs> nah. And I wasn't look. Nah, that was Big A. Hey, shout out to Big A roasting my shoe. My daughter bought me too, man. Go ahead, brother. I'm nah, still soft. But 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 he bought them thinking they were free. Hey, look. <laughs> bro, I can't wait to wear these at the shop. Hey, the they fellas nice, gonna though, love these. Hey, they comfortable though, bro. Look, they look, comfortable. look. And you gotta have comfortable, man. You only get one pair of wheels, man. Right. That's That's it. Look, you know? yes. But but you know, like, man, and then I but I was doing this, man, and so I went to a place with my mom, man, and, and make a long story short, I bought a piece of land out in Villa Rica, out in Carroll County. I was 14. I still own it to this day. And so they which a lot of people say, you can't do that, you 14. I said, look, well, the laws state that a minor can enter into a contract and it's not binding on their part, but it's binding on the other party's part, which meant I, I could have walked away at any time and not been liable for that. Oh, okay. Man, I'm about to nail yes. right. yes. hey, hey, hey. So so you you oh, know man. at any but they would have had to keep their end of the bar. Yeah. Right, and that's right. the whole thing. So they were at a loss, but they were so hungry to sell this stuff that they was like, shoot, I don't care. I sell it to an elf. I sell it to you, yeah. whoever. Yeah. And so you got, the, you got the bread. So I had my five hundred dollars to put down. I put that money down and guess what? I was a real estate owner at fourteen. That's right. Fine. And so and you know, fast forward, man, you know, and I turned down that job, let me tell you the last job I turned down though was a, a, a good old company y'all may know called Waffle House, right? Yeah. And so a lot of people don't realize Waffle House got that paper. I okay. know they do. They yeah. got that. They got that. Man, look how many they got. <laughs> okay. Look, man. Because we always eating it. Look you how know, many they got. Man, look what they. And they, they got them on every corner next to a right. McDonald's. And guess what? And they it own it. They own about like ten dollars. Everything in that motherfucker, hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Why man, the look. why the price always fluctuates? Man, is that you know, price ever consistent? Man, listen, man. Never. I, never. All right, I don't mean to derail you, but I just wanted to say that about time. No, no, no. I want to. I know. Who said he was Waffle House? He said he turned them down. Look, look. Pay attention to the. Well, well, no, but see, but I, I worked for Waffle House in high school when I was bust. After, I mean, I don't work so many jobs, man. Before, before I had got to college, I mean, I worked at Toys R Us, Waffle House. I sold the the, the knives, cut cold knives. I, I mean, did that, look, man. I, I worked at a place called uh, Q's, Q's Barbecue. That's what it That's was. That's what back, I did. Back back the knives, the college, man. I worked at. I got. I mean, look. I, I went to the people at the school. I was like, I was fourteen. I said, I, I need a permit because I need to make some money. Yeah. You know. And so I went over there and I was just working everywhere. But anyway, I had that opportunity, man. I went sat down with the third person in charge from Waffle House. And he was like, hey, he said, listen, the founders are getting older. He said, we need to figure out some people for the next generation. And so what ended up happening is we ended up coming together. And I told him, I said, hey, he said, we're going to make a position for you. And so to make a long story short, I ended up turning them down, man. And everybody thought I was crazy. It was like, man, you don't turn down not one, not two, but three six-figure job offers. And so, but 20 years ago, 20 years 20 ago, years man. Ago. And, and so, you know, and it was kind of crazy. I mean, I think, you know, doing what you do as an entrepreneur, you got to kind of be a little crazy. You got to be crazy. Yeah. You, you got to have yeah, a little bit of that crazy in you. So and, let me ask you this real fast. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. looking back on all three of them offers, would you took any of them now? I, 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 I wouldn't have, but it was a lot of times during that journey. When I was, I sure was going to be like, that phone was burning hot in my pocket. <laughs> let me tell you. Because I'm, I'm so what you saying that, right? It was burning hot in your pocket. What kept you from calling them? What kept me from calling them? Because I know it's a lot of days you probably had them broke nights where you like, yeah. I'm going to do this shit. Because yeah. we all entrepreneurs yeah. oh, up yeah. here. We all did oh, yeah. like we said. Oh, yeah. And so I know, like, every night is not a good night. Yeah. So them nights that you were down and broke, like, what really kept you motivated for you without picking up that damn calling and hitting that damn number? Man, I think it was something God placed in me, man. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. See, most people don't realize, you know, I didn't really start at this school uh, because of 
ton of reasons. You know, I started my first game my junior year because of some crazy favoritism, really. Yeah, it was I, a lot of politics. I, 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 I didn't even play anymore until my senior year. So wow. you got to, I wasn't on anybody's radar. That's why I went to a small school, even though I was the number one and number two running back out of the state of Georgia when I graduated. Wow. But everybody had already given all their offers away. Now he's saying right? small school because he knows what he deserved. Correct. But he still went D1 AA. I, I went D1 AA. But double based a. on his statistics, his GPA, his extracurricular activities, yeah. he should have been at a, at a powerhouse football man. team. Correct. You man, told me. Right. on that right being a groovy, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Man, I'm just, I'm just saying the fact. <laughs> Yeah, Don't be kicking over there with the ladies. <laughs> you can't over there kicking yeah. with the ladies and shit. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to teach you. Yeah, you're trying to get a co-signer. Yeah. 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 You can't yeah. be yeah. 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 on your own. You can't be a single show, She can't be on the show like, yeah, we got him now. Hey. Hey, man. Look, look, Thank look, you, Daisy. Hey, hey, this is some of that south side shit. Hey, look, 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 look. He wrote right. the book. Now, see, this what was about to happen. I was trying to tell production, let's, let's, take a, let's take a break at 845 so we get some more Daisy shine. But since Daisy is going to want to keep it up, I'm going to turn my hat back and get in super fan mode. Hey, I'm going to run. It's rally time. Look at Daisy. Daisy running the show. Look at him. We can try to run it right now. Hey, look. 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 Yeah, I just want you know j just to answer your question, like you know, it was man because I, I always knew I was gonna play college ball, right. even when they didn't put my name on any kind of things list as being any kind of recruit for the following year, and 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 so you know, and they were just looking at me like, yeah, you know, he, he you know he go, he may play, but he ain't going to college. But I knew I was going to college. I knew I was gonna play, and I did it. And it was the same thing, man. When when I was out there. I knew it was like, I had, it was a purpose, man, that I knew that I, I was supposed to be doing. And I knew that, that, that if I was going to do it, I, would, I needed to do it then, you know? And, 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 so, and so regardless of what happened, and it was some tough times, but it kept seeming like I, I would pray and I would talk, and it would be like something would happen. It wouldn't be like the whole thing would be answered, but I would get a little bit of glimmer of something. Yes to keep on going. Yeah. And, and then and then I would and then it would be a little glimmer again and I would keep on going. And then you would hit a good spot to where oh. it would keep you going. Hold on. Now speaking <laughs> of good spots, and we are gonna we are gonna uh go to a quick song right quick. We're yeah. gonna break off right there on the artist's oh, name. Yeah. We got we, we trust me, Gator, I know this is the Gator show. <laughs> this is Southside two thirty one God Gator shit going Somebody on. Somebody come get David Ruffin off my show because I, I am not the fucking show without David Ruffin, Gator. <laughs> this is Gator. I am the Bro, and these are the temptations. Hey, but look, hey, Gator, Gator, we got to go to Will Be Free, and the name of that song is Feel Good, man. Take us to yeah. The Starving Artist Podcast. Uh, yeah. Now I go with the press. Oh, my God. Dropping the hot shit all fucking night. I just want to make you feel real good. I just wanna make you feel good. I just wanna make you feel good. I just wanna make you feel good. Always been the illest since the minute that I met you Always been the realest if I knew that it was special Always leaving people fucked up so regretful Always there to kill it if I ever was to let you I gotta admit it, the dopest to ever get through This for all the people that chose not to respect you That can never get with it but still can't forget you Always been the illest since the minute that I met you I just wanna make you feel good I just wanna make you feel Good. Hey. Soon as I met her, knew I had to keep up, had to give her credit. Never had a visa, knows how to rock it. Calling my Ariza, tell me who let this gal in. Only wanted a leader. Harder not to sweat it, getting hotter than a fever. 
Won't be a shortstop, she never been a Jita, hallelujah, amen She got me feeling like a preacher by the bread I'm the baker while she's singing some Anita, I need her She find it in a ticket from a meter After just a slice, she got me teasing like a pizza Shorty got it going on, her name's Bonita Every day she on the stripes, her favorite sneakers is Adidas Never been commercial, fuck a feature of a previous Stephen Clay in a prime, tell me who can really be the shoot em up About to make the splash, brother, feel bad for the last, brother No, I'ma be your last, brother, let me make you feel I just wanna make you feel Real Good I just wanna make you feel Good I just wanna make you feel Real good Real good Real good I just wanna make you feel Real good Real good Been the illest since the minute that I met you. Always been the realest if I knew that it was special. Always leaving people fucked up, so regretful. Always there to kill it if I ever was to let you. I gotta admit it, the dopest to ever get through. There's for all the people that chose not to respect you. That can never get with it, but still can't forget you. Always been the illest since the minute that I met you. I just wanna make you feel good. But this is episode 50, 65, man. Yeah. And I'm Gator J, man. We got so many good people on here tonight. We really just, we can't even quit talking. We feel good. So we don't we? Yeah, we feel good. Right. Yeah, we feel good. Right. <laughs> and the name of that song was Feel Good. Yeah, by Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel 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 that's what I do. I take risks. I find opportunities that, that I can invest in. I've invested in a lot of companies. We've helped start over 10,000 companies on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and we've also helped another 12,000 through our events. So we've helped a total of about 22,000 uh, businesses, and so we help them grow, start and grow their businesses, and our whole uh, mantra is just to help small businesses make more money. Okay. Right? Yes. yes. So, I'm glad that you said that. So, that's why he's trying to whoa. test it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's what we have here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have a pharmacist, doctor pharmacist, and we have a man who makes startup business to help you with your startups. So can you give us, like, is there any guidelines that you can give us to starting up a business? Even if you can't walk them through it, is there, like, five or six there that yeah. we should know? Sure. Well, well number one, I would say um, anything you do, it's a DCD framework. I'll give it to you real fast. The, the D stands for desire. Right? Anything you do, you, you need to you need to like it. I mean, cause you can make money doing anything, man. You can make money selling toothpicks, hot dogs, hair, whatever the case is. But you wanna do something that you're passionate about. Like what y'all doing right here, man. This is fun. This is this is something that you know you share your passion, something because guess what? If you if, if you don't have desire behind it, when the going get tough, you're gonna quit. Right, okay? Right. Cause cause it's gonna get tough. And so, right. and then the second thing is the C is capacity. 
okay? Do you have the, can you do it, right? That's probably the easiest thing to feel if you can't because you can always hire for capacity. You can hire somebody to fill mm, that role, right. right? So if I was opening up a, a, a drug store, I'll be like, hey, you know what? I'm opening this up, but I ain't, I ain't, no, I ain't no pharmacist. I'm gonna go hire me the yeah, best pharmacist yeah. out there and make that work, right? So, and then, the, and then the last thing is demand. And this is the, probably the most important thing. A lot of us love doing stuff, but if ain't nobody gonna pay for it, see, it's one thing for somebody mm -hmm. to like you mm -hmm. and, and, and even be interested in something, but does that correlate in dollars enough for them to pay you for said thing? Because, you know, you have a lot of people that say, ooh, a lot of people love to, 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 to do this or love to do that, but hey, will they pay you for it? Right. Is it an actual demand in the market for that? So if you have demand and you have um, a desire, but you don't have capacity, you can't deliver it. If you got demand and you got um, 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 uh, d d and you got uh, capacity, but you don't have desire, when it going to get tough, you're going to quit, right? Mm -hmm. And if you got um, uh, 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 capacity and, and desire without demand, ain't nobody going to buy it. Right. So you have those three things and you can do it and once you do that i would say um uh, uh go out and launch it don't think too hard on it okay because the market is going to tell you where the not is good or not we get in our heads trying to plan everything and, and, and we plan ourselves right out of opportunity right now this season it's never been a time like this this next four Dang. years and it's never going to be a time like this ever for as long as we live this next four years if you don't take advantage of this market that's out here mm. this existing money's flowing yes, freely yes, yes. that's why i'm telling people i'm like put your hand put your hand in the deck you know put your put your put your cards in because right now it's the opportunity to go and go all the way yes Dang. sir Dang. Oh, hey, yeah. did we all get quiet? Yeah, 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 that I can get them prescriptions that right. I can't. Um, no, but I think you deal with a lot of different people and just the downside of just seeing the people who you really can't help. Like I got into it to help people yeah. and you know, I'm in a community that has our people in it. And so when you see our elderly have to come up to the pharmacy by themselves and don't have relatives or don't have grandchildren or just their children helping yeah. them or coming, to, you know, I see 80, 90 year olds walking into the pharmacy, barely can walk and I'm like, or asking them about their medication and they have no knowledge of what they're taking. That's mm. scary, you right. know? And that so that's, those are the downsides that I start to see are just the health disparities all over. Um, and then the great part about it, the upside is I get to help. Anytime we see those challenges, anytime we see those small disparities, we have the opportunity to help those people out. All right, so uh, as you've been a doctor, you also give shots, right? I do. I give. So, I give that. Oh my god! So, I don't want no shots. Hey, <laughs> <back. laughs> well, so, look, the camera guy behind the scene. So, don't want to so stop. Produ production folding me. his arms. <laughs> what do you think about this Corona shot? <laughs> Can you? Are you a little bit disgusted? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I'll say this. I, I feel like everybody has. They have the power to make their own decisions on what is is helpful for them and their family. Um, that's the same thing I tell tell everyone who gets the COVID vaccine, right? Because one of the first questions they'll ask me is, did you get the shot? Uh -huh. um, and I tell everyone, no, I did not. Yeah. I have built my immune system to work for me. And so I don't need the vaccine so, currently, in my opinion, because yeah. I know my immune system is working. And, and, and so how can you build your, your immune system up so you don't need the vaccine? So one of the key things is diet. I think a yeah. lot of people think that, you know, putting more medications yeah. in your system. Yeah, yeah. buddy. Uh -oh. <laughs> hey, well, you know, what do they say? Let food be thy medicine, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. absolutely. The, the pharmacy with an F, A R M. Pharmacy, like pharmacy. that. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, That's that. the pharmacist no. I was, yes. you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Gator. Just Get focus, Gator, Gator, focus. Yes. No. And hey, I'm proud of I you, Gator. People, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so bad. Uh, hey, man, same, I, man. But no, no, seriously, you, though. Um, you know about Hearts Pharmacy over there in uh, Riverdale? Hearts Pharmacy. So it's, a, it's an older. Is it um, the old blue and white? 
It's no, it's right on Highway 85. It's man. in it, between uh, McDonald's and okay. yeah, right there. Uh, yeah. Right well, OG else. knows yeah, exactly. Hey, man, look at him, man. Hey, hey, this is GTA. I'm letting y'all, I'm letting y'all have that You know what I'm saying? Yeah, look, Harris Pharmacy been there for over 50 years, man. They wanted to, they really wanted the staples in in the Clayco. Yeah, and I mean, you know, they, I mean, they have a a health side of it. So I mean, you know, when you know, that's when I learned about emu oil and. Uh, you know, uh, emu oil. Emu oil. I ain't know. never heard of it. I know well, what emu oil. So, so emu oil is when, like, so if you get a, a a cut or a scrape or something, you put that emu oil on, on it, and it just it heal it up. Right, which Fast. is crazy. So it comes from the bird. Yeah. yeah, it comes from the bird. It comes from the bird. It sure I, do. Now one hey. that motherfucker. Hey, look at that. Hey, we gonna have an emu on the brunch menu next month. Hey, my birthday, I'm going to get an ostrich leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gator wild gator. We gonna get locked up at yeah. Customs with the Oscars yeah. lead, but we got no, it. no, they got it at the steak market. That's where I'm going. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 my boy yeah. living, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Living. I was just trying. Way. I was just trying to see because you know, you know, I know you. You being an entrepreneur before, man, you would be the perfect you um, person to be a a pharmacist company. You know, and, and 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 to make those things happen, especially because of your approach to it, and that's one mm. of the things that I see, like your heart. Thank you. To, 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 because like you said, you know, not not telling people the honest truth so they yeah. can make their yeah. own decisions. I think this is what we need in America. I yes, say absolutely. this. I say I this. Agree. If you get that pharmacy, I'll invest. That's what I want. That's what I want. I want to spray Gator. Good clean money. Oh, man. Oh, oh, I have a oh, tattoo oh, shop. Oh, good hey, money. Hey, 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 Gator, I'm that guy. You he know when you need guy. that guy, that get that guy. I'm that guy. You go get. Okay, okay. there okay. it is. Okay. Hey, I got a question for you though. Um, to go back when you were saying that you gave it all up to start this career, when did it actually physically sink in that you was on your way? Who is that? That was for me. Yeah, you. Talking about the modeling career. No, 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 no. The pharmacy. Oh, when she started with the yeah, pharmacy, yeah, yeah. when because I know you, you had to go to school and all that stuff. After you finished school, I know you was like, oh. You know what? It's so weird because even finishing school, I'm talking about once you graduate, everything you done took photos. Yeah, that's you what still I'm talking about. Really don't feel like you're a doctor. It's almost like you're in yeah. a state of shock. Yeah, like right. Just that title, right? <laughs> and so for me, it was. Just hearing people say the words, I'm like, ooh, you know, I still get chills. Like, oh what, what, what I what I like to tell people is, no, receive that because mm -hmm. I worked hard for it. And so yeah. for me, just know knowing that I made it was, you know, seeing people who saw me grow up or saw where I was, yeah. be proud about where I am now. Yeah. And I'm talking about it's like mainly people from Clayton County, like yeah. because they've seen, you know, my grind yeah. from that point from the beginning. And so I think hearing. That, you know, just hearing them and how proud they are of me, that's when I knew that I was like, yeah, I, I did something very important here. Hey, let me tell you yeah. how important what, so, what Daisy did. Let me, come on, come on. Because y'all let me fan out of y'all roast me by him. Yeah, yeah. So I got a fan moment. She a me. lady, so you can be a groupie. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Go ahead. My lady, this is for you, my lady. Now, I ain't going to lie to y'all. So here's my fan moment with Daisy. So this morning, I woke up inspired about this show, right? And I'm walking through the house. My daughter's getting ready for school. And I'm just practicing. Hey, Chris Chicago starting off. I'm just practicing. I'm going to bring y'all in, right? And then so I say, yeah, and the rose that grew from Clayco, the concrete of Clayco. And my daughter's like, her name's Daisy, Dr. Daisy, right? I was like, yeah. She's like, so so say the Daisy that grew from Thank the concrete you, in Clayco. I'm yeah, glad you came on. up. Hey, look, I got, I got it. And she said, don't forget to say doctor, OK? Yo. Because that's official. Yeah. So I want to thank you right now for doing that. Because I was able to wake up this morning and inspire my daughter, and I didn't even know she was listening to me as I was trying to walk through the house and, and get you know ready for the show. But the that's children are always lady. watching. Yes, yes, the children yes. are always That's listening. a smart young lady. And I'm grateful that you 
did do that and you overcame that adversity yes. for my daughter to even have the opportunity yeah. to pitch in. And that's a lesson and that's that. gonna that she's gonna be able yeah, to carry now right. because she's gonna to know that when she's in the presence of others, whatever title or credentials that she has, make sure that people say like if make I sure. if I yeah. went to school to be a doctor, if this is my credentials or whatever you have, make sure people present you that way. Because I so was gonna ask name. you before he interrupted me. I had to fan it up. Man, before he fanned out, I was sure was gonna ask you. So when they say Hey, hey, Miss Daisy, you say, no, it's Dr. Daisy. You better put some respect on my face. You know what you do? No, it's Dr. Daisy. It just it depends on the setting. It depends yeah. on where I am. Fuck um, that. For now, you say, it's Dr. Daisy. Hey. Heard you. Heard yeah. you. So, I don't know, miss, no miss, no nothing. It's Dr. Daisy. It's Dr. Daisy. It's D or that. Daisy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Daisy. 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 On the show, yes. man, the doctor yes. and the dude, man, this is beautiful shit right here on the south side, man. Hey, um, man. You wish you would have started that career before all the other stuff? No, absolutely not. I I wholeheartedly know that my journey was written for me that way because I wouldn't have a story to tell and I, or I wouldn't appreciate my journey as much as I did if I didn't start off the way that I did. Oh. And too, I was able to, like I said, before I started this, I was able to live my life and fulfill a lot of the dreams that I had. Yeah. And so... yeah. Doing that, I no regrets at all. I mean, and I think, yeah, yeah. I, I think this is something uh, that's very important. I think a lot of us, when we're going out, even starting a business, we think that the number one benefit from starting a business is the money. It's, yeah, not. it's not. It's the experience. Mm. The knowledge. I always tell people, you cannot Google experience. You can Google everything else, yes. but you can't Google experience. If, if you don't get out there and do it, see, the thing is... You, you know, man, listen. <laughs> Bars. You know, look, right? Look, look, man, I'm going to tell y'all, listen, when the stuff, the, the things I learned the most about was the mistakes, the yes, failures, absolutely. and all of the failures that my clients made, right? Those things, you know, now when I go and I speak on stages and I speak in rooms, I'm on the stages with billionaires. These people obviously got more bread in their bank, but I know more than they know. Yes, I, was, yes. I was talking to my boy and I was like, he was like, and, and he was like, man, I said, I, Obviously, these guys have, have, have made it there financially um, on because um, they're billionaires. And he was like, yeah, man. He said, but you've been in the trenches actually helping these people, so you know more. And I, and I realized, I said, see, it's not about uh, knowing more or not knowing more. What it's about is going after the big problems. See, the people mm. who are the wealthiest in our nation, they go after the big yes. problems. Yeah. If you go after, see, the thing was, I didn't go after small problems. I just went after, you know, decent-sized problems. But if you look at the people, the Elon Musk, you look at the uh, the Jeff Bezos, you look at all these people, they have figured out a way to attack the large problems. Mm. So the so the value that they've delivered to these large problems in the world has has um, has translated into that money in their bank account. Okay. Yeah. And so and this is the reason. See, I don't I don't see money is different than me. I look at money as a tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it, yes. it's you know so mm -hmm. so. I, what made me want to build a multi-billion dollar company had nothing to do with JR wanted. I'm fine. Look, look, I'm fine. Look, I don't care. Like, me, I got I got six kids. Okay, me and my wife, we got six kids. So you know, I don't mind rolling up in the in the minivan, man. Look, I mean, <laughs> so, oh my, I man. You know, at, at first we get the expeditions. Hey, hold on now, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute now. You know you wanted one of them Astro vans with some days on the back. In the day, there you go. You know you wanted one. Look, look, look. I remember the with the ladder on the back. Yes, look, the ladder on the back. Oh man, see, I ain't going that far. But, but what I'm saying is, is y'all listen. It, it's not about just the money. A lot of people just want to have stuff so they can buy stuff, and it's and that's cool. But that stuff wear off. I mean, mm -hmm. money to a certain point when you don't have to struggle. Everybody yeah. should get enough money to where they don't have to struggle and they don't have to worry about where their next um, uh, things are going to come from, where their next things. But after that point, man, it's like, then what? what? What is your life? What are you? Look, man, I wanted to be able to help more people. Okay. And, and it, that, but I had to make enough money to help more people. Right. right. right? And yes. so you have to build a big enough business that you can't, I don't care. You know, I have made millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. I've never made billions of dollars. Okay. Yeah. In order to, you know, in order to really help the people that I want to help, the millions of entrepreneurs that I want to help, I have to make billions of dollars. Right. Okay. And, and this is the thing. So you talking about customers and audience bases. 
they show you how important you are by the by their reciprocation in dollars, mm -hmm. not just about what they say. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so this is the thing, man. So I just want us to understand that when you're going out here, look at these big. It takes the same amount of time to achieve a small goal as it does a big goal. OK, it's going to take your life. Yeah. And it's much yeah. easier yeah. to achieve a bigger goal than it is a smaller goal. Why? Because not many people are trying to solve the big problem. That's one thing. Okay. But, but it's also because you're going after those big things, people are attracted to that. So you can yeah. recruit higher talent. Okay. Right? If, if I'm talking about, yeah, man, we're going to go over here and, you know, we're going to make about five, ten million dollars. And I, But if I tell somebody, nah, man, we're going to go over here and make five hundred billion dollars. they like, man, well, you know, I want to be a part of that. Yeah. Because even if you hit a fraction, if I shoot for the stars and I fall on the moon, hey, I'm still up there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, but, but you got to set your goals high enough. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's one of the things I want us to think about, man. Like, you know, us coming from the Clayco, man, being, being, being here, man, you know, like I said, because it was at one point in time, people don't realize this was the jewel of, the, uh, of South Atlanta. This was, you know, this, this whole community, man, everybody wanted to be here, yes, okay? Absolutely. And I do believe, you know, with, with, with the right leadership and the right people and the right investments, we can get it back to a place, right. okay? And, and so, and, and I think, but it all starts with us. Innovation and entrepreneurs, the world needs entrepreneurs. So let's get it. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, man, I feel empowered, man. Yeah. So. I, I don't know about that. I feel inspired and empowered. I, I'm grateful for the guests that we have for today. Hey, I hey. see Gator smiling. <laughs> Gator don't like to, hey, he don't like to be happy, but Gator is happy as shit on the inside right now. But I know Gator. Gator you know don't like to be happy. Gator, yeah. Gator, 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 Gator just smiling. Yeah. He said Clay Co for real. Yeah, real you know what I'm saying? Like, he for we, real Clay Co. We ain't got to smile to let you know we happy. You see yeah. it. You but you yeah. see it though, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This hey. is and remember, man, this is not Atlanta. We real Southside, Clay County. Yeah. And we doing big Southside, Clay County thing, oh. man. Fuck Atlanta, but we fuck with Atlanta. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, everybody yeah. except for my great auntie, he's hey. talking about, he not talking about too great. I ain't talking about that. Fuck Atlanta, but fuck Atlanta. We fuck with him, but yeah, shit, yeah, we yeah. south side niggas, And we're going to show y'all how we're going to do it hey. in Clayco, man. We're we going to definitely show you what can happen in Clayco when you put some positive people around, man, and you let whatever happens happen. Hey, and man. you let creation and creativity take over. Hey, man, we're going to let this creativity flow. Through my boy DJ Upset in a minute, man. But before that, man, we finna get up out this motherfucker, man. But before we do, man, y'all give out y'all handles and let us know who y'all is right here. Hey, man, on Facebook, I'm Chris Cognis. On uh, Instagram, I'm Rocky underscore MBK. R-O-C-K-E underscore MBK. Uh, J.R. McNair on all handles except for Twitter. J.R. McNair 1 and websites, jrmcnair.com. I have two handles on Facebook. I'm Mae Johnson. On Instagram and Twitter, I am Dr. Blooming Beauty. All one word. All Dr. right. Doctor. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Okay, I am DJ Scooby ATL on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Yes, sir. Well, see, I guess I'm the only one who only got one name and one platform. And you can find me at GatorJ231, that's J A Y 231. On oh, all platforms, uh, man. And I only got one question before we get out of here, Smeeze. Are y'all hungry? Uh, I'm always hungry. I'm always hungry. <laughs> get him, Smeeze. Yeah. Chris, you gotta get up on your shoulder. I crowd, bro. He said, Yes. Not you about to get fired by Gator. Look, street money on me and I look right. dirty. My kick cost 200, my rick cost 30. Big vintage glasses got me looking nerdy. Yeah. Big old black fat nigga flies a birdie. South on my back like the name on the jersey. I'm really ballin' like magic and worthy. Hey. Back to back, Kobe and Shaq. Uh, I'm the rubber band to a rack. Foot on their neck like a mat. Might get the foreign and paint them at black. Facts. And I'm coming straight up out the south side. I want money long as on that. Paper. I'm walking around with like half a tree. My pocket fat of me. Forty shots to my anatomy. It'll burn you like a calorie. Hey, all of that water on me. I need a windshield wiper. Huh. Bitch on the shit and the diaper. I'm rocking Christian, no Bible. Huh. Four rings on me, Audi. Car got a horse, howdy. My pocket deep, crowded. I'm Master P, bout it. I just put down on my neck. 
I got the flawless baguettes. Cut. My nigga ballin' on net. Bucket. We taking out like a jet. We out of here. Nigga, that fat's on fat. Big fat. And I got rats on rats. Big rats. These nigga cap on cap. They cap. And that your dad on net. Period. Ayy. Cardio watching these shit like a butter. Diamonds surrounding the face like a huddle. Rollin' poke out my pocket like bubbles. My money talking too loud, need a muzzle. My only focus is making it double. We doubling. Then we gon' make that shit triple. We tripling. Then we gon' make it quadruple. Quadruple. We really ballin', no dribble. Wrist hitting hard like some ripple. My niggas eating, you nibble. My niggas swindle like Kendall. No matter where we at, we keep a blicker. I'm about to cash. I got the blues, I ain't talking jazz. I live my life like a grocery store. I keep a bag. I blow your budget, yeah. you in your bag. Yeah. I'm in my luggage, yeah. Louis V duffel. Big ol' 40 on me, I do not tussle. I'm about my ruffles, I get butt down on my neck. It flooded. I got the flawless baguettes. Cut it. My nigga ballin' on neck. Bucket. We taking out like a jet. We out of here. Nigga, that fat's on fat. Big fat. And I got rats on rats. Big rats. These nigga cap on cap. They cap. And that your dad on neck. Period. Ayy.